How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? <laughs> You're either cursed or blessed. <laughs> I'd rather be blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because if you're cursed, the enemy he has access to you. Amen? Amen? Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. What a time we are in. Amen. What a time. Things that are happening, I love it. I love it. I love when the enemy is losing. Amen. I love it. It gives me great honor <laughs> to watch the wicked be rewarded with exposure. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. Praise God. You know, we have talked already about um, seasons and, and how God places us in seasons. Now, every season has a beginning and an end. There's a long-term season and there's a short-term season. And in these seasons, there are what we call visions. God gives you divine visions. And there are short visions and there are long visions. In other words, there could be something that God is asking you to do. The vision is for you and I to cooperate because God will speak to you more through vision. Did you ever hear the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words? Amen. God will show you things and then confirm it with his word. And so in these things that you, he will show you, it's for you to fulfill something so he can release a promise. But if you're not willing to fulfill it, the promise is held back. And the only way to really uh, align yourself with the Holy Spirit who empowers you to become obedient and strengthens you is through worship. That is the only way you can align yourself with the Spirit of the living God. If you are not willing to worship, you can't humble yourself and you're too full of stinking pride. Bottom line. And God says he rejects and resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So if you're waiting for God to move on your behalf, you better move on his behalf. Amen. Because the word says what you sow is what you reap. Amen. You sow in the spirit, you reap life. So as you're sowing in the spirit, you're worshiping the Lord, you're speaking the words, you're eating the words. That's called eating the scroll. As you eat the scroll of God, light comes in and penetrates darkness, begins to remove things. You begin to change. Because as a Christian, you and I are living a constant transitional life. We're always transitioning. Always, always. Now, that's up to the individual. So the price that you and I must pay is called cooperation. And he's given us the formula, you must deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. In other words, you've got to fight. If you're not willing to fight, you will lose. Because there is no victory without a fight. Amen. Does everybody get it? You're either a wimp or you're a warrior. Amen. One or the other. Okay. Psalm 50. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to hear the truth, right? Wow. Amen. You know, did you ever wonder what God thinks about you? Well, he loves me. Of course he loves you. But does he trust you? Amen. That's the key. Everybody knows God loves you. But does he trust you? That's what we earn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 50, verse 16. Let's speak it together. Now, there is the wicked and there is the righteous. There is no in between. Does everybody get it? There is light or there is darkness. There are no gray areas in God. Amen. So there's no in between. This must become an understanding. You are either wicked or you are righteous. One or the other. This is how God looks at us. Does he love the wicked? Of course he does. He wants them to turn, doesn't he? He hates wicked deeds. But his hope is that the wicked will turn from their wicked ways and become righteous so they get home. Amen? Because good people don't go home. Only righteous ones do. See, people use the word good thinking that's the in-between. 
that, that's the gray area, good. But there is no gray area in God. It's either light or darkness. It's either righteousness or wickedness, one or the other. There is nothing else. That's what he sees. And one of the things he wants to do is get us to see what he sees. And verse 16, is everybody there? Let's speak it. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth, seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you? When you saw a thief, you consented with him, and you have been a partaker with adulterers. You gave your mouth to evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. One of the things God requires is order. There's an area where we're going to talk about kingdom order. Amen? It's called divine order, but there's a kingdom order. Many people have no understanding about order. Those are priorities in life. In verse 22, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces. I'm telling you, if the Lord stood before somebody and said, I'm going to tear you in pieces, after the person blacked out, you'd have to get him up. <laughs> and they'd be repenting and crying like crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine the Lord showing up and saying, I'm going to tear you in pieces? <laughs> Snap! You can't escape being torn in pieces. He just has to think it in your dust. Because people that don't have the fear of the Lord, the reverence and honor and respect, should at least have that he can kill you in a second and send you to hell. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver you or help you. Whoever offers, what? Praise. Is that worship and praise, right? Glorifies me. Well, I don't like to sing to the Lord. Well, you're an idiot. You'll sing every stinking thing else, serving the devil, but you won't sing to the Lord? Then you got a problem. It's called demons. Whoever offers praise glorifies me, and to him who orders his conduct aright, that means an order, I will show him the what? Salvation of God. Now, this is powerful. Whoever orders their conduct aright, this is called kingdom order. Kingdom order. These are priorities according to the kingdom life and living. There is wicked and there is righteous. It's reflecting a positional attitude. Reflecting a positional attitude that either pleases God or displeases God. That's what he's looking at. Is your attitude pleasing God or displeasing God? Why? Because that's a part of the kingdom order. That's a prior to, pri, prioritizing according to kingdom life and living. Is everybody okay? Reflecting a positional attitude that pleases God or displeases God. In Matthew 6, kingdom order. Well, I read my word all day long. Reading your word is not going to align you with the Spirit. Now, don't get me wrong. Reading your word always is giving you direction. It increases wisdom. Amen? But when you are worshiping the Lord, there is revelation that comes by the Spirit because without aligning yourself with the Spirit, you can't interpret correctly what the Word of God is saying. That's why. So the, more, the less you worship God, the less you're going to interpret this. And you become stinky religious. And you'll think that your good works is going to get you in heaven. But God wants you to know him and know who you are so that you know who you are in the identity of Christ. So many people put their identity in everything else. Basketball players, musicians, uh, teachers, whatever it is. My identity is not a pastor. 
My identity is not a husband. My identity is not a father. My identity is a son of the Most High God. My identity is in Him and, and only Him. Everything else is a blessing. It's not of my talents or abilities. It's Him. I am in Him and He is in me. Has everybody got it? Because we are hidden in Christ. When you lose your identity, you lose focus. Then you fall into a place called survival. And you're surviving, you're surviving, you're surviving. And then you're in torment because you can never get anything done. You become compromising and lazy. And you don't fight spiritually. And you're constantly in the battle of oppression. You're constantly in the battle of confusion. Because you don't know how to fight spiritually. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Matthew 6. Praise God. Verse 25. Matthew 6, 25. Let's speak it. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Hallelujah. <laughs> what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet... Your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? <laughs> Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet, I say to you, that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, oh, you little faith, you little connection, you, you don't know who you are, and you don't know who he really is. You pretender. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Isn't that wonderful? He knows that you need them. But first seek what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be what? Added to you. First seek heavenly order of the kingdom by learning kingdom principles that unfold his righteousness through obedience. I'm going to say that again. Why, do you, why, do, why are you seeking the kingdom? You're seeking a heavenly order of the kingdom by learning kingdom principles that unfold his righteousness through your obedience or what we call your cooperation. Without cooperation, you will not succeed. Amen? Practice makes perfect, doesn't it? Amen. First seek the kingdom of God, that's that heavenly order, and, the, and his righteousness. Wow. Those are kingdom principles. Well, I don't know kingdom principles. Well, that's why you got to learn them. You're not going to learn them sitting home watching TV. Hello? You must come and fellowship. You must learn them. Luke 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 6, verse 39. Let's speak it. And he spoke a parable to them. Can the blind lead the blind? <laughs> Well, will they not both fall into the what? Ditch. So if you're associating with someone that doesn't know the truth and you follow them, you're going to both go into ditch. A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Everyone say perfectly, perfectly. trained. Well, these are not Bible studies. These are training sessions. We are in a military operation, not some religious goofy thing. Amen? We had enough of religion. 
The Bible's a manual. You're in Holy Ghost Boot Camp Officers Training School. Amen. <laughs> and it doesn't stop. When he says jump, jump. When he says dance, dance. When he says worship, worship. When he says pray, pray. That's all it's about to it. Obey. Hallelujah. Glory. It's perfect, perfectly trained. You'll be like your teacher. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye when you have the national grand forest in yours? Or how can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove the tree trunk in your eye when you yourself do not see the national grand forest in your own eyes, you hypocrite and pretender. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of his heart, his mouth will speak. That's where attitude is, positional attitude. That's where God will judge you. He will judge you whether you are righteous or you are wicked. Is everybody okay? Verse 46. For by, uh, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I, what, say? <laughs> Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show him, show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep. Dug what? Deep. deep. Oh, yeah. Searched it out and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was what? Great. 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 Perfectly trained according to kingdom life and living. That's called kingdom order. Hmm. Not Those not willing to hear and obey, well, they don't partake of the kingdom. Amen? They don't partake of the kingdom. Know that by the attitude of that individual, their mouth will discern whether what they're agreeing with. You're either agreeing with wickedness that's influencing you or righteousness that's influencing you, influencing you. Now, you have the power to choose. Does everybody understand? But that power comes by aligning yourself with the Spirit of God. You cannot get any other power. You must align yourself with the Spirit of God. Amen? In James chapter 1. Perfectly trained. If anybody ever has been in a military, you know what boot camp is like. You don't have a say. <laughs> the only thing you say is yes, sir. <laughs> they need a true kingdom of God boot camp. In verse 2, let's speak it. My brethren, count it what? All joy when you fall into what? Various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience, endurance. But let patience have its what? Perfect work. Here you go. Are you ready? That you may be what? Perfect, complete, and what? Lacking nothing. Don't you want to get into a position where you lack nothing? And whatever you don't have that you know is a part of your need for kingdom business, it's coming. 
Somehow, somewhere, it's coming, no matter what. But if you're not spiritually positioned in line with the Spirit, you're going to miss it. Has everybody got it? If any of you lacks wisdom, which tells you what to do, let him ask of God who gives it to all freedom, liberally and without reproach, and I will be given to him. But let him ask in what? Faith. 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 With no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And let not, let not that man suppose that he didn't receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Hmm. Double-minded person and unstable in all of their ways. That means God can't trust you. Testing your faith is your true connection with the Father and of your positional attitude. He will check your priorities according to the kingdom order. Amen? God will even challenge you. God will challenge you until submission to his order. And how does he challenge you? By not giving you what you want or what you need. You'll have to get it yourself. But there isn't anything greater than when God brings you something and you know it's from dad. What a relationship. I love it. And he wants to bless us every single day with something so that you recognize that he's with you. He's watching over you. Amen? So he will challenge you until you submit to his order. <laughs> and it is attained by waiting or what we call enduring or what we call it patience. See, he, he holds things back waiting to see if you're willing to trust him and wait. He wants to know if you're going to go another route or you're going to wait on him. That's how you earn his trust. Patience. Because to be perfect and complete and lack, lacking nothing, you must attain kingdom order. Priorities. Amen? With an attitude of righteousness, a clean tongue, or you will wait <laughs> and wait and want. Has everybody got it? You will what? Wait, wait, and want. Luke 9. Kingdom order. Hallelujah. Whew. We are in a new season. I love it. Messiah season. High expectation of return of the Lord. My dad's coming. I'm telling you, he's coming. But he's coming through the body first. Then he's going to personally show up. But he won't touch the earth. They'll see him in the heavenlies. But they'll see me and you go to him. But woe to them on the earth who are left. That means without eternity. W-O-E. Woe. Luke 9, 23. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Let's speak it. 9.23. Yep, 9.23. Here we go. Then he said something to them all. If anyone, what, desires to come after me, let him, what, deny yourself. Take up the sword or the cross and fight. Then you will follow me. Again, when you pull the cross out of the ground, it becomes a sword. For whoever desires to save his life or serve himself will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake to serve him will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and becomes famous and he himself is destroyed? For whoever is ashamed of me and my word, says the Lord, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory 
and in his fathers and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. And I believe there's going to be many of us. Many of us. Oh, yes. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, fight and follow. In the kingdom, there is constant transition with radical change, dimensional shifts, and challenging seasons. I'm going to say that again. In the kingdom, there is constant transition. There's a constant transition in your life. And they're with radical changes. They're shaking changes. Things that rattle you. See, God wants to shake you to all the change is gone. So gold and silver is not your God. In the kingdom, there's constant transition with radical change, dimensional shifts, and challenging seasons until kingdom life and order become the reality of true life for you. It must be a reality. In 2 Corinthians 6, you know, he says, I'm going to shake everything, even the heavens and the earth, and everything that can be shaken will be shaken, and those that are not shaken they get the prize. They get the reward. They get the favor. We are entering the early and latter reign. 2 Corinthians 6. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Here it is. He gives you some keys here. I love this. Here's a keys to some kingdom order. He really emphasizes associations in this because it's vitally important. Because we need to have kingdom order of associations. Amen? People, places, and things. He says, verse 14, was he say, do not be unevenly yoked together with what? Unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness or what we call wickedness? And what communion has light with what? Darkness. And what accord is Christ with Belial, which is demonic? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with what? Idols. Idols. People don't realize what idols are. Anything that's between you and God is an idol. If he ain't first, that's an idol. It could be your wife, your children, anything can be an idol to you. Your job, your talents, your ability, whatever. It can be an idol to you. Let me tell you something. There's three things in the kingdom according to the will of God. It's the will of God. It's the will of God. And it's the will of God. I'm so tired of hearing this foolishness. It's God, your family, then your job and your church and all this stuff. Forget that. It's God, God, and God, and everything else will fall into place. That's why marriages are destroyed and everything. Why? Because they're falling out of divine order. They're falling out of kingdom order. They put their family before God. They put their relationships before God. Nothing's going to last unless God's first. Amen. Man, I, 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 you know, when the first time I heard it, I said, Dad, I don't like that saying. And I heard it from preachers and pastors. I said, I don't like that saying. I, I just, it just grieves my spirit. It should be you, you, and you. And if it's you, you, and you, Every chamber is filled. That's what the tabernacle is, right? It doesn't mean we don't love our family, of course. It doesn't mean we don't fight for the things that are according to a, a God's will for our family. But our family should not be an idol to us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Verse 16 again. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, that means if you will do this, if you will what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch what's unclean or wicked. Don't agree with it. And I will receive you. I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the what? Fear of God. 
perfecting holiness. Remember, kingdom, order of associations. Don't do or touch what God doesn't approve of. Has everybody got it? Anything that he doesn't approve of, don't do it. Don't agree with it. Don't touch it. People, places, and things. People, places, and things. 1 Corinthians 4. Why? Because this will move you right out of kingdom order. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Listen, we are in a time right now you don't want to miss. You don't want to miss. I'm, I'm so excited about what's, getting, what's happening. I'm excited what's happening in our government. All the swamp creatures are going to be beginning to get exposed. Those reptilians. <laughs> Those are the swampies. They serve the wrong God. They serve idols, they serve money, they're out for themselves, they lie, they cheat, they steal, and they kill. And they're being exposed and being removed. Some of them are dropping right out of office because they know they can't even get reelected. I love it. Those are swamp creatures. We're watching God penetrate through the prayers and intercession that God has put into the body of Christ to fight, fight, and fight. Oh, glory. Wimps don't fight. Soldiers do. 1 Corinthians 4. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. In verse 1, let's speak it. Let a man consider us as servants of what? Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now, it's more than just stewards of the mysteries of God. We are stewards of everything of God. We are stewards of the finances. Your money is not yours. It's his. I work for it. It's not yours. It's not mine. If you truly have a relationship with the Lord, you know what? You'll ask him, what do I do with this money? Somebody got it. Lord, what, what, is this approving to you? That's his relationship. See, and as you begin to obey him, same thing with tithing. People don't tithe because they think it's their money. One day, God's going to take 90% and give you 10. Then you'll wonder how that goes. <laughs> when he's just asking for 10%. People will not, you cannot prosper without tithing and sowing. Amen? You can't prosper. And whatever you have, eventually you'll lose. You'll, you'll be afraid of losing money. Because money is now the God. That becomes an idol. See, when you're in a relationship with the Lord, if something happens and you lose whatever, you know God's going to bring it back. It don't matter. Okay, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Why? Because there's a trust and relationship. Listen, you're to be an offspring of the one that holds the universe. You think anything's impossible with him? <laughs> He's the one that gave me a new breath. He took us from the dust. And created in us and breathed in us. And said, here, take a part of my life. That's why he rebuked the disciples when they're on the same boat with them. Man, don't you guys believe? Peter was the only one that took a chance, stepped out on the water. And he began to walk to the Lord. Of course, then fear came and he sunk. And the Lord picked him up. <laughs> but stewards... Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God and his finances and everything else. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. Faithful, honest, true. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or any human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the what? Lord, that's relationship. The Lord's always before you. He's allowing, you're allowing him to judge you. Judge me, Lord. Search me through. Remove those things that offend you and cause me to stumble. Am I, is my attitude pleasing you? Is, is how am I handling your finances pleasing you? Is every, this, is how, this is a relation. This is true, this is true Christianity. 
relationship. That's why it's called Christian, Christ-like. Not like Christ. Christ-like in this. Because if you're Christ-like, his like is in you, and your like is exchanged. You're one. Does everybody get it? Now you get to another place. Because in this place, it says, now you are not only the righteousness of God, but a joint heir. Amen. Can you imagine being a joint heir of Jesus? Snap. He says, everything that I have is yours, and of course, all that you have is mine. So when I pull in a parking place, somebody says, you can't park there. I say, wait, my father owns this place. <laughs> but then I politely move. <laughs> Out of respect. <laughs> Even though my father still owns that place. Hallelujah. Is everybody Okay. So you and I are stewards of the kingdom order. Everyone say, I'm a steward of kingdom order and possessions and finances of God's kingdom. I am an ambassador. I represent kingdom life. 1 John 2. First John chapter 2, I love this one. Glory. Is everybody there? Snap. Let's speak it from verse 1. First John chapter 2. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is propitiation for our sins. And not for our sins only, but also for the whole world. Now, by this, we know that we know him if we what? Keep his, keep his commands. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commands is a liar. Oh, that's pretty blunt. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, keeps his word, keeps the word of the Lord knows the word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. And he who sa says he abides in him ought himself also walk just as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. And again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because... The darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. How does the word of God, wait a minute, how are they overcoming the wicked? The word, word of God's abiding in them. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God, he who does the will of God, will abide forever. So he who does not do the will of God will not abide forever. Kingdom order is maintained by living from the word of God and being filled with the spirit of God by worship which aligns us with the Holy Spirit to overcome demons and their influence in our lives. To do the will of God <laughs> is often met, met with great adversity. If you really want to do the will of God, there's going to be great adversity coming against you. 
Amen. And challenged by evil powers to entice you and mislead you, missing the predestined appointments of your destiny. The devil's not stupid. Hell, with any person that's not filled with the Spirit of God very quickly or is not in the Word or knows the Word. Ephesians chapter 4. Too many people quit, get weary, become compromised. They lose the zeal of the Lord. Because of the area of non-consistent. Consistency is the key to victory. That's why it's important that you first strike. Amen? Amen. Don't let a devil rest on your territory. First strike and kick him out. Ephesians 4, and verse 11. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping, for the training of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, carried away with every wind of doctrine by trickery of men and cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Hmm. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God or from the kingdom order. Because if you're alienated from the life of God, you're alienated from the kingdom order. Because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you've not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him or trained by him as the truth is in Jesus that you do what? Put off concerning your former conduct or your former order. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. But re be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, the new order, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin, and don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil, because he'll kick your butt. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather what? Labor or work, working with his hands, what is good that he may have something to give himself, give himself, give him who has need, <laughs> give of himself like maybe tithing, offerings, helping to expand the kingdom of God and not your own kingdom. Let no cor uh, corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers or God's plan to the hearers. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, Anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, and forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is essential. You want to follow out our kingdom order? Be a person that's unforgiving. It doesn't matter what has been done to you. Has everybody got it? You don't understand. I don't want to understand. Here it is, forgive, and then you'll be forgiven. Amen? Bottom line. If you're not willing to forgive, you can't be forgiven. Colossians 3. Oh, glory. Equipping, training, teaching, not living according to emotional influence. And selfish desires but according to a new order of life, 
that parallels with the eternal life. Laboring on to the kingdom with work, ethics, according to kingdom life, not past life, but new life, helping to expand the kingdom of God, not your selfish kingdom. God will bring all things to pass according to his order and your obedience. <laughs> In other words, listen, don't get jobs in bars. It's amazing to me how many Christians I hear are bartenders. How boneheaded can you be? Woe to them who serve mixed drink. Don't go to those other places where there's perversion and uh, hooters to work. Hello? You don't, you don't have to waitress in those places. There are other places to waitress. Amen? Amen. I mean, it's incredible to me where Christians don't get it. You know why? Because they're not plugged in. They're not aligning themselves with the Spirit. And they're, they're going to just get a job and make money, and then they spend it right away because the devil keeps stealing it anyways. Because there's no ethics to that. There's no kingdom desire, no kingdom order about being a steward of God's money. Then I wonder why people don't trust them. Would you lend your car to someone you know can't trust? If somebody came up to say, look, and I'm going to borrow 100 bucks, you know they weren't going to pay you back, would you lend it to them? Heck no. Not if you, especially if you know what they're going to go do with it. Amen. Colossians 3, verse 1. Colossians 3, verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, set your thoughts. Set your attitude, set your desires on things above and not on yourself. Not on earth, things of the earth. The only thing you want to set on yourself is whether conviction. Lord, am I pleasing you? Is my life pleasing you? Are my decisions pleasing you? That's what you want to set on yourself. Somebody got it? And then you fight for your healings. You're fighting for divine order. You're fighting for kingdom order. You're fighting for spiritual position because the fight is constantly against you. The adversary don't sleep. And he attacks you when you sleep. <laughs> Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died. Everyone said, I'm dead. <laughs> for you died and your life is where? Hidden with Christ in God, if you believe that. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is what? Idolatry. In that word, idolatry is called idol. Anything that's between you and God is an idol. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the, whoa, sons of disobedience. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them, but now you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Don't lie to one another since you have put off the old order of man with his deeds and you've put on the new order of the kingdom who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Putting off the old order and putting on the new order. Amen. Galatians 4. One more scripture. Galatians 4. Verse 1. Kingdom order. Kingdom order. Let's speak it. Verse 1, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but under guardians, under what? Guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. So that's what God does. He puts us under places of accountability. But see, there's so much independent spirit 
It moves people out of position. Even so, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons and daughters, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not God's called idols. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? This is where people fall out of position. They fall out of the kingdom order. They're allowing something else to become before them and God. Does everybody get it? They're, in other words, you and I are under guardians for training, submitting to God's order. Why? If you're not submitting to God's order, you can't resist the devil's order. Amen? And the devil will constantly kick your butt. He will drag you through the bushes. He'll use you as a welcome mat to his kingdom until you either finally die, go to prison, or become ill forever. Is everybody okay? Anybody want that? Why well, do you have to be an idiot if you do? And let's close at 1 John chapter 5. <laughs> I guess it was right to the point. First John chapter 5 <clears throat> and verse 18. Kingdom order. Order in the kingdom. I guess maybe that's where they got order in the court. <laughs> it was the outer court though. There's really not. <laughs> Anyways. Did you ever go to court? Man, it's crazy in there sometimes. Verse 18. Let's speak it. <clears throat> we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. In other words, you don't allow sin to reign in your life. Doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. You know, when you drop that hammer on your foot and you say, oh, holy shift. <laughs> Verse 19. We know that we are of God. Some people are going to have to read, go back over this, go, what did he say? <laughs> holy shift. Verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the what? Wicked. Wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding. Understanding what? Kingdom business, kingdom order. That we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Here it is. Little children, keep yourself from what? Idols, idols of self, money, talents, jobs, people, places, and things, and associates. Don't let anything come between you and God. Amen? Why? Because it will, it will alter kingdom order. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We want to be ready in season and out. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? That's the key. Consistency. Perfect training. No one said it was going to be easy. But I can tell you the reward is great. The reward is what? Great. <laughs> Why handle a temporary reward that's going to go away? Let's do an eternal reward. So, Father, bless your people. Protect this seed. And, Holy Spirit, use it. Use what you've spoken to us in a mighty way. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.